In this video, we will cover working with and creating your own effects. The effects are automated programs that simplify complex movements of the different parameters of your light. To start working with effects, you first need to select a group of fixtures and put them into their locate position. Next, press on the button that says effects on the right hand side of the touchscreen to open the effects window. It is important to note that the order you select the fixtures in is exactly the order that the effects will run through them. If you select fixtures 4, 3, 2, 1 and run an effect, it will run in the opposite direction than if you were to choose 1, 2, 3, and 4. This window shows the library of the 237 pre-made effects available. You can go through the library by using the up and down buttons, or you can choose them by type, pressing here, causing a drop-down menu to appear, which will allow you to filter the effects available by either intensity, position, color, or beam. We will start by choosing intensity effects and tapping on Dimmer Linear 3. You will see by selecting this effect, there is now a dimmer chase on the selected fixtures. In the current loaded effects window, Dimmer Linear 3 has now been loaded into one of the five available effect slots. In this box, you will see in the upper left corner a number that indicates how many fixtures are currently being used. In the upper right corner, you will see an I. This tells you that it is an intensity effect. To change the direction of the effect, simply press the effect direction to run the effect in reverse. Now, let's add a position effect to this group of fixtures. We go back into our drop down menu and choose position effects and select circle. You will see that the circle and dimmer effects are now running together. If there is an effect running that you don't like, you can turn it off by first selecting the effect that you don't want, in this case dimmer, and then press delete effect. This will leave us with only the circle effect running. To remove all currently running effects, just tap delete all effects. To adjust your effects, first make sure that the effect you want to adjust is chosen and highlighted in pink. Then at the bottom of the window, you can start by adjusting the size and speed of the effect. If size and speed go to zero, your effect will stop, but the effect itself is still running. Spread adjusts the distance that the effect is spread out over the selection of the fixture. A second page of adjustable effect attributes is available by pressing effect attribute. The first attribute is speed group. This will group the fixtures together in however many groups you choose here. By selecting two, you will see that every second fixture is now moving together in unison. By selecting three, it is now grouped by every third fixture and so on. When speed group is running, spread will be disabled. When adjusting block groups, you must first set a spread. Then, when you make your adjustment, you will see that the fixtures will group based on the fixture next to it. Two will group them into sets of two, and three will group them into sets of three, etc. If you don't have enough fixtures to divide evenly by your block group number, you will see the remainder at the end of the line, no matter which direction your effect is running. Width adjusts the width of the effect.
Switching to your third page of attributes will show you the start and stop offset. These will edit where your effect starts and ends along the shape of its path. Now that you are done editing your effect, you can store it as a cue, or if you wish, to use it throughout your show as a user effect. To do this, press Save Running Effect, and then select the position where you want to store it, and then give it a name. Press Confirm when complete. If you only want to save it to a single queue, press exit and then save to queue. We will save it to queue 6. We will clear this out. If you want to assign the same effect to a different group of fixtures, all we need to do is select the new group of fixtures, press effect, and select the user preset that we just stored. Then we'll save it to Fader 7, which will allow us to run the same effect on different queues and for different fixtures. Finally, we will show you how to use a fader to adjust the parameters of an effect. We will press Playback Parameters and select Fader 6, which is where we saved our first effect. Now we can choose to be able to control the size, speed, or both parameters within the fader. We will choose speed. 